My project is called the Bakuni and it's inspired by a concept already used in African country where they use water to cool things down. Um, the, process, it, the process came about by looking at food waste as a, as a problem. Um, so people, loads of people store fruit and vegetables in a fridge where it often gets lost and people don't know how long it's been there so it ends up getting wasted. So I wanted to design a, a product that would be outside the fridge, cool it down naturally and so they can, so people can use their fruit and vegetables more wisely and reduce waste. Uh, the key features of the product really is um, you pour water down through this funnel here and as water soaks up in between the inner layer of the steel bowl and the terracotta bowl, uh, water will slowly seep out this terracotta porous material and so as air, cir uh, air circulates around the bowl, the water will evaporate and the inside is left cool. Um, so it, during testing with the prototype, I managed to achieve sort of uh, 10 to 15 degree reduction in temperature. So it's not as cool as a fridge, but cool enough to keep your fruit and vegetables fresher for longer. There's a timing mechanism over here. So say if the user wants to store their product for 12 days, the user can set it to 12 days, and every day the counter will count back until it hits, gets, gets to zero. So they know how long stuff's been stored for. Um, the process of evaporation is sort of temperamental according to what sort of environment it's in. Um, so when there's sort of low humidity, evaporation is not so well. So the idea of this base is uh, um, there's a sensor inside there where it recognises the temperature. So if the temperature is above 15 degrees, which is too warm, the fan will automatically switch on, start to circulate air, and so to induce more evaporation to begin the cooling process again. The name of my product is Levo uh, and it's a bicycle pannier and mountain rack. Uh, and the idea came about um, after talking to some users of existing panniers. Um, they highlighted a number of, uh, of issues with existing panniers, um, both functionally uh, and also just the image as a whole and how they're perceived kind of in society really. They're not seen as a very fashionable uh, item, um, especially with the younger generation um, who might be more fashion conscious. You often see that Panniers are a kind of old tatty bags uh, that kind of just hang hang up down the side of the bike and we don't really look that aesthetically pleasing, especially when a lot of users um, take a lot of pride in the appearance of their bike. You have kind of the pannier rack separately on the bike and then you have to put the panniers on that and a lot of users then have a, a mud guard separate to that as well which they have to attach to the bike and then a light. So, um, so it ends up really kind of moving away from the, the styling of the bike as a whole. Um, and blemishing it slightly. So the key features of my product are um, firstly the, the hard casing uh, which drastically improves the impact resistance of the, of the pannier um, especially when this, this side is uh, designed to hold a laptop um, which obviously needs to be protected. And going back to the overall configuration of the product it's only the, the mountain rack is only mounted on the seat post and not down by the axles like conventional panniers which means that cleaning is a lot easier. There's also the light built in, uh, which again um, is trying to prevent the overcrowding of the bike. Um, and you can see that the mud guard is built into the, the mountain rack as well, which removes the need for a separate mud guard. Uh, so on this side, uh, you've got a waterproof cover. Panniers, even when you're riding in, in dry conditions, can get really dirty, so the textile sections need to be protected. Um, it's zipped around the casing, like so, uh, which then reveals uh, the backpack section. Uh, covers then folded up and stored in a pouch in the bottom of the bag. My project's a cardboard eco vacuum cleaner which is uh, designed in partnership with Vax where I did my placement. Uh, the idea came around with everyone um, designing products which are injection molded plastics um, and I wanted to take the performance aspect of a vacuum cleaner but bring a sustainability element to it, uh, incorporate the environment as much as possible and have uh, the inclusion of uh, cardboard if possible. Um, and through a number of studies and research I was able to come up with a method where I could include as much cardboard as possible, uh, giving the product uh, the same performance values as any vacuum cleaner but with the added benefit of being uh, extremely cheap to produce, uh, cheap to run. Um, incredibly lightweight and customizable so the, the, the consumer can have a real bond with a product. It's uh, the idea that the product is never finished. There's always an element that you can uh, scrap and 
uh, enhance yourself, uh, doodle all over it. Um, it's not something that's pristine and finished, whereas uh, an injection molded component is at its, uh, its highest performance and can't be changed in effect. My project is called Flow um, and basically it's a new modern kitchen tap. Uh, the inspiration for it came from on my placement year, uh, working with a company that produced uh, kitchen taps and bathroom taps. And I sort of noticed that the technology hadn't progressed within the domestic market for about 20 years. Uh, it's still the same mechanical cartridge and I just thought the modern user needed something a bit more modern to suit their needs. Uh, so the inspiration kind of came from a variety of different things. Uh, the capacitance technology used in touch lamps and the infrared sensors used in uh, public bathrooms and restrooms. Uh, I kind of merged the two together and tried to still give the user complete control over the flow of water and the temperature of water. The problem with the public toilets is the fact that you put your hand under it and you get one flow and you get one temperature. So I still wanted that manipulation but I wanted it to be more hygienic and more user friendly. The touch tap itself works with a capacitance technology and you tap it anywhere to start the water flow and you tap it anywhere on the chrome part to uh, stop the water flow. And to actually control the flow of water and the temperature of water, you use hand gestures. Uh, there's hot on the left side and there's cold on the right, which is the convention for kitchen taps. Um, and to increase the flow of cold or hot, you literally pull the water out from the respective side with your hand. And to decrease the flow of water, you push it back into the tap. And at any moment in time, you can tap it anywhere on the chrome surface. Um, and that will shut off the flow of water immediately. So if you've got dirty hands, you've got raw meat on your hands and you don't want to leave that residue on the surface, you can tap it with your elbow, you can tap it with your wrist, you can rinse off your hands with the water it gives you straight away, and tap it straight back off again. You've left no water residue or raw meat residue on the actual surface of the tap itself. My project is a tea maker uh, for cafes. At the moment, tea is not as exciting to go to say as coffee to drink in a cafe. Um, so it's really trying to make a modern ritual for tea drinking in cafes. Um, it's called the Stornoway Tea Maker because uh, the Stornoway is the name of the first tea clipper that was made in England uh, to sort of beat the Americans from the race from China to London. So this is the grinder. So this is where the tea brick would be uh, ground. And then this is where the tea would actually be brewed and made. So first of all, you want to grind your tea from your tea maker. Tea so you just turn the wooden handle and then the tea would fall into here. You could have two different teas, so you could have a black tea blended with a bit of chamomile or green and a white tea uh, blended together. Uh, so you can make your sort of signature tea. Put that to one side and then you go to the, the tea maker itself. So there would be water in the top here um, and you, want, you can change the temperature of that water and the time it brews the tea for by altering these figures here. So up here would be six minutes, one minute, and then uh, 60 degrees, and then right around here would be 100 degrees. Once it's set, the water will boil, and then you can, you're ready to pour in your tea into the top. You then let it steep or brew. Um, once it's brewed, it'll automatically drain through the handle uh, into the lower section. And then, once that's happened, you can just flip it over and then you can just pour it out whenever, whenever you're ready. There's quite a lot of history sort of weaved into the product. So things like the wooden handle here um, was inspired by uh, like the wicker around um, tea clippers baskets. Um, and then the purity of the tea itself and the health benefits tea has uh, sort of forms this glass sort of shape. Um, and then things like the nautical maps and sectant sort of gave inspiration for the, the time controls. Transporting the tea from China. Yeah, and that sort of journey from London to China and China to London. My project is called Loki and it's an inclusive cooking system designed to specifically meet the needs of a visually impaired audience within their kitchen. Uh, the project came about by an idea which was followed up uh, carrying out user research at the Royal National Institute for the Blind College in Loughborough. Um, it allowed me to carry out various focus groups, interviews and observations to identify what their particular problems and needs were uh, and solve them uh, within my design. And the basic design works using a lock and key concept whereby there are particular features which align to ensure the safest possible use of the product. Uh, this obviously depends on your level of experience. A more experienced cook would probably choose to use the product in their own way, offering a level of flexibility. 
whereas a less experienced prod, uh, user or a less confident user uh, might would, would probably use, decide to follow these particular features just to ensure that they know where, where pans are, where handles are, and to reduce the hazards um, that these would present in an everyday um, environment. So my product works on the uh, works using induction technology. Obviously, the principle of induction technology is you can turn the hob on and it will stay uh, stay cold until you put a ferrous pan on. Um, after this point, the pan then heats up and the heat transfers back into the surface. And the problem with this is obviously it heats up, uh, and when the, you remove the pan, it leaves a very hot surface, which presents an immediate hazard to uh, to the particular user. Um, so one of the features of this product uh, was to overcome that that that, uh, that initial problem and reduce the hazards uh, which which it was presenting. So the features which align are these features that run up the side of the base, along the silicon sleeve, and under the underside of the handle. The purpose of these two is to ensure that a visually impaired user can align these two parts uh, without, uh, with, obviously with their um, particular impairment and lack of vision. Um, in order to reduce the surface temperature uh, that, induction, that the induction technology poses once the pans are reduced, these silicon sleeves also have a perforated base. Basically what this means is that the heat, can be, the heat can escape from the base of the pan through these holes and as it doesn't sit flush on the cooking surface uh, the heat can disperse through the outside edges and it means on removal of, removal of the pan the temperature of the surface stakes around 65 degrees which to the touch is only warm. Uh, the markings up the side indicate where the on off position is and the increase in size as well as the depth of the uh, recess in the top of each bump indicates the temperature change and the control knob from first approach, is, as it's asymmetric, indicates exactly uh, where, the where the temperature is set. So it's obvious which side it's pointing to as opposed to a, a constant bar which would remain unclear to the user. Once the user had finished cooking, they can place their, uh, their colander, specifically designed, onto the pan and then simply twist and lock it into position. With this in place, you can then twist the pan and you can strain away. And it means that you don't have to expose yourself to any particular risks until the food is strained. Once you're done, you can spin it back over, untwist, take it away, and serve your food.